So I'm going to talk about the symptoms of a failed capacitor. So to simulate this, I have disconnected the capacitor from the circuit. So what you may find is when you try to turn the oven on, the fan circuit breaker trips. The fan circuit breaker is located towards the rear of the control box, closest to the bake chamber. So you may find this trips. Now sometimes you can reset it, try to turn the oven on again, and it will trip again. Uh, so that would take me to believe there's an issue in the fan motor circuit. Uh, most common failure point will be the capacitor. So at that point I would test it. Uh, otherwise, you may be able to turn the oven on, but you can tell that the fan motor is not actually running. So either way, I would, I would test the capacitor. You'll need a multimeter to do so. I have an amp clamp here. We'll change our setting to AC current. Now I'm going to test the wire coming straight off the fan circuit breaker. I know it runs straight to that fan motor. And then now I can turn the oven on. So what you're going to see is locked rotor amperage. So the motor still receives voltage, but without the capacitor, it's unable to spin. Uh, you're going to pull about 20 amps, give or take. And then now we have the thermal protection switch. It has interrupted voltage to the motor uh, due to it not being able to spin and getting hot. So I'm going to show you how to test the capacitor for the fan motor uh, of our ovens. So it's probably the most common point of failure when there is an issue with the fan motor circuit. So you'll see it in the control box. This one's wide open for us. Uh, it should be mounted to the component mount against the back panel of the control box. Here we have it. Uh, the data sticker does show us the rating of the capacitor. It's a 30 microfarad. So all we need to do is pull this boot off. And then we'll remove the wires. Just like that. Now the best way to safely handle a capacitor is to discharge the capacitor. So all you need is a screwdriver and you'll short the terminals to each other. Make sure you grab the handle and not the metal of the screwdriver. And then next you will need a multimeter that can test capacitance. So I have mine here. So it has multiple settings here. You'll see, I'll have to click mode. And now it's showing us farads. So I'll take the two leads and I'll put one on either terminal. And you will have to test for several seconds before it gives you a reading. So now it looks like it's given us 31.05 microfarads. The rating on the sticker was 30 microfarads plus or minus 6%. So that's within range. So here we have a good capacitor. Now, if you're getting locked rotor amperage and your capacitor checks out okay, uh, a couple other scenarios would include mechanical interference. So you could have something in that back wall cavity actually obstructing that fan blade from spinning. You would see the same, the same symptoms, that same locked rotor amperage, your circuit breaker may trip. Uh, furthermore, the fan motor shaft, it could be seized, uh, just an issue of the fan motor itself, seized on itself and will not spin. Uh, it would cause the same symptoms.